since the beginning of the year, many analysts were expecting uh, the construction sector to bounce back. Are you seeing that trend right now in the construction sector in Nigeria? Um, thank you, Feli. Well, I actually think um, the sector well um, is is um, definitely going to rebound. You know, before the end of the year. Um, currently, things are a bit slow because um, one is that the bulk of um, clients clients in the industry are. Um, at the government, you know, and then uh, besides that, uh, they're calling the private clients. Now, um, on the government side, things have been a bit, uh, a bit slow, you know, until um, until the budget is actually passed and then it's actually disbursed. But then um, on the private client side, um, several private clients have not been able to get um, access to adequate um, funding from banks, you know, to finance their project. So that has actually slowed down the industry a little bit. But then we're actually optimistic that things will actually re uh, rebound before the end of the year. But what steps do you think? that the construction sector should take for the sector to rebound? Um, the thing is, the sector actually depends, you know, like I said, significantly on getting contracts um, from government. And so um, whatever is going to happen in industry really is dependent on how um, government revenues are, you know, um, during the course of the year. And um, in Nigeria, for instance, um, the bulk of the government revenues is from oil. And so, well, um, in recent times, oil prices have been actually appreciating um, a little bit. So that's a good plus, you know, uh, for the government. So like, um, that means that there will surely be um, enough um, revenues to spend on industries, uh, different industries in the, in the economy, of course, uh, the uh, uh, um, different industries in the economy. Um, so, well, on this side, actually, uh, the bulk of the bulk of revenues, yeah, definitely comes. Sorry, the bulk of um, the clients is from the government, and so to a very large extent, so long as um, the government keeps getting um, increased revenues, then that's uh, th that's actually going to be positive for the industry. Then on the private client side, what I think um, the, the industry uh, players can do is to actually like partner with banks, you know, to get access to um, funds even as in um, in time also for the bulk of their private clients. Well, Bunmi, is it easy for the construction sector to get loans for projects? Um, it's, it might not be that easy for the, uh, for the particular players in the, um, in, the, in the industry. But then what they can do is to partner with some of the banks, you know, that the bank. You know, I know like, uh, like for example, Kostain has like um, a deal with um, First Bank and Echo Bank, you know, whereby it's, it's able to access funds yeah. for some of its big clients. So if some of the other players in the industry can do this as well, this will actually go a long way into improving the sector. Well, talking about Costain, how exactly is it faring against the likes of Julius Berger? Um, Costain is actually um, a very small player compared to Julius Berger in terms of market share. It has just about 5%, while Julius Berger controls about 80% of the, of the industry. But I think by and large, um, the company is actually improving. There's a new management uh, which actually took over in, in, in 2007. And in recent times, they've got um, lots of projects in different parts of the um, of Nigeria, particularly um, in the Niger Delta, and so um, for, for the for the new management now, their focus is actually to to get projects in areas where um, where they are key competitors. So that's Julius Bega now is running away from you know due to all the arrests in in that area, and so for them the, um, that's that's um, that's been quite uh, quite successful for them, you know. So uh, uh, hopefully, you know, um, they should be able to get lots of. Um, projects before the end of the year, you know, in addition to the ones they already have, and that that will definitely boost their revenues by the end of the year. And what's the outlook for Julius Berger? Julius Berger has very strong uh, prospects. Um, the bulk of its of its clients is the government, and um, they actually have like a very good track record. Most of the projects that they complete actually have a um, very good quality. And so uh, we still think that they're still going to get lots of projects, you know, from the government and, and um, a few from some um, private clients. Um, by and large, uh, we're actually very, very optimistic about Julius Vega. For us, we are actually um, recommending a buy for it. The, the current PE is about is about 12 times, which is which is um, quite attractive. And also in terms of dividend yield, um, Julius Berger actually has a very good um, dividend uh, dividend history. Um, I, I don't have the actual figures for last year right now, but their dividend payout is generally in the neighborhood of about 60%, which is quite high. And so we still think that um, there'll still pay lots of dividends this year. And um, based on dividend yield, PE, and also our fair value for the company, it's a buy.